Hello everyone, I am Darlene with Discovering Knitting and you see my face in this episode because everything that I've had as far as a whip, completed project or yarn haul I've already shown you. Today we're just going to be discussing some things and knitting. And before we get started, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you subscribe, please like and comment. If you're not subscribed, like and comment. Um, I decided to wear something different today because it's kind of hot here in um, Atlanta and my and my house gets hot. So I open up the windows and I turn on the fan. I don't want to turn on the AC because in my mind, I'm saying it's October. The AC shouldn't be on. However, it's Atlanta. So that's why I'm dressed like it's summertime because I refuse to turn on my AC because psychologically in my head, it's supposed to be cold, so I shouldn't have on the AC. Does that make sense or am I just weird? So anyway, I feel like I'm just waking up, which I am. <laughs> That's why I have my cup of coffee. Oh, and also, I just wanna apologize to you guys because my side views, like I literally do not pick my hair out and you can see the parting and everything and it, it's a mess. Like now you can see I shave my sides, but I didn't realize you could see I actually just parted my hair and didn't pick it out. So sorry about that. But um, yeah, I just focus on what's front. I even have my hair still twisted down so you can't even see the back. But when I turn, I know you'll see it. This is me. This is who I am. Love it or leave it. Comment and joke about me in the comment section. I'll probably laugh with you. So um, if you watched episode eight, um, you saw where I picked up this mandala sparkle yarn by um line brand you can see the razzle dazzle my niece want wanted an infinity scarf and it's the color is aquarius and i'll just reread the specs um it's 328 yards 94 percent acrylic six percent polyester and it's a light weight of three so and I just remembered all my notes are in my phone, which I'm recording this video from. So I'm going off memory by what I wrote down to talk about. I'm going to say them out loud so we'll know, and then we'll get back into the yarn. I was gonna discuss yarn weight. I was gonna discuss pattern. And I was gonna discuss <laughs> people asking you to make stuff when they don't even know what it is. So those are some of the things we're going to discuss. And also, double pointed needle versus cable stitch, which scares me more. So now, now that I've refreshed my middle age memory, we'll get back into this yarn. So my niece um, loves blue. And I said blue anything. She said blue or teal. So when I saw the sparkle yarn by Lion Brand, I noticed that it had the blue, the teal, the light blue, the uh, not even a powder blue but like almost an electric blue in the middle and the gray, which sets it off. So I decided to make her a scarf. Now, this is where we talk about weight. When it comes to weight, and I'm also knitting as we talk, um, weight matters when you're making stuff. And I didn't realize that as a new knitter, uh, when I would see other videos, <clears throat> excuse me, and people would, mention the weight i'm like why are they mentioning the weight i'm going to mention the weight because they're mentioning the weight they've been doing this longer than i have they must have a method to their madness so um i realized yesterday why they mentioned weight they mentioned weight because <clears throat> you need to know what something weighs in order to know if it'll how it'll carry on a pattern and when i say carry on a pattern this is a lightweight three and this is very thin compared to a full weight. Just thinner thread, not as thick. So making a rib stitch on this will not look the same and it won't give the same wintery look that this calls for. So I had to find something, a pattern that called for a lacy scarf to make this for my niece. And it took a while, 
But what I did was I went to Ravelry and I went to the pattern section and I typed in lacy scarf and I came up with this great breezy scarf that this woman had um, and it was beautiful. And it looked like she used not a lightweight three, but it looked like she used a four weight, but it was lacy. So I realized I could use a lightweight three and would still give the same effect because with lighter yarns, people tend to do lacier products. So this is what I'm working on. And this is a really simple stitch. It is literally knit one, yarn over, knit two together. That's the entire thing. And I think it'll look good. I think you can still see the razzle dazzle. And to make it an affinity, I'm just gonna, where the ridges are, I'm just gonna sew those together to keep it with the lacy feel. But I realized then that as a new knitter, weight does matter. And I didn't realize um, how frustrating it was, it was going to be until I was trying to find a pattern for her scarf and I couldn't find one. So, um, come on. So I just wanted to discuss that with you new knitters. If you see something that says uh, super bulky, bulky weight, four weight, one weight, find out what the pattern is on the front. Now I know at Hobby Lobby, I believe it is, or yeah, at, Hob at Hobby Lobby, they just have, I love this yarn with no picture. So if you get a yarn that just says, love this yarn with no picture, if you have a pattern book or if you go to Ravelry and you find a pattern, look at what size weight yarn they're using because not all items look good with um, all, size, all weighted yarns. Like a lacy pattern wouldn't look as good with a bulky five as a lightweight three or lightweight two. A lightweight one, two, and three those are for like shawls, lacy scarves, lacy gloves, like lacy arm warmers, uh, headbands, that type of thing. When you get into your thicker material, that's when you get into the sweaters, the, um, what do you call those things? You know, the jackets. I can't even think of the cardigans. Oh my God, I'm middle age. <laughs> the cardigans, um, the heavier scarves, the hats, the gloves, the heavier wrist warmers are for those kinds of things. Um, and of course the one, two, three, uh, maybe even four would be good for socks. But with four, you're running on a thicker pair of socks. So they may be just good for like socks you wear around the house with no shoes on. Um, so weight matters when you're picking up yarn. And I didn't realize that too. I've been knitting since August, like the middle of August, August 8th, I think I started my first knit right around my birthday. So September 8th, October 8th. So I've been knitting literally for two months and I'm just discovering this. And also another thing I discovered, doing a stocking knit stitch in the round and a stocking knit stitch on um, straight needles are totally different things. And I didn't realize that until I tried to make that black and white hat I showed you on yesterday. And I realized that that's what it was when I watched a video from Sheep and Stitch or Stitch and Sheep. Um, I followed them on YouTube. And that's when I had the aha moment like, ah, oh, that's why this hat looks like crap because the pattern I was using was for straight needles and not for knitting in the round. So, yeah. So, I mean, these are things you think about when you're knitting. So, I just wanted to bring those things up. What else did I wanna talk about? Cable knit. Let me show you, see I'm showing you guys my head. In this book that I showed you yesterday that I purchased, I started reading the pattern all the way through to see if I could actually master this. I think these gloves are absolutely beautiful. So, as I was reading the instructions, I came to row three. Can you guys see row three? Row three says, and this is for the beginning back of the hand. It says, knit 10, purl two, and in brackets, it says four stitch RC and then purl two. 
and then the bracket ends, it says three times mic five. So that says that it's the right cable. And I had to go and look at the video to find out what that meant. So I know RC means right cable and LC means left cable. So for four stitching, that means I will put four of the stitches on the right cable. And then the brackets means to repeat direction in bracket or parentheses the number of times indicated. So that means I'm going to repeat the cable knit stitch for three rows. Um, not for three rows, I'm sorry. I'm going to repeat the cable knit stitch three times. So after I purl two, I will go back into right cabling again, purl two, back into the right cabling again, purl two, and then do the right cabling and then knit the five. So I'm saying all that to say, I think I'm more comfortable from reading the instructions with um, cable knits as opposed to finger gussets. And most of you will say, yeah, because cable knit stitching is easier. Well, to me, both of them are difficult because I've never done them before. So I, 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 I mean, and I, I'm not gonna lie, I've been dragging on my knits because the close, the more and more I knit for my wrist warmers, the closer I get to doing those finger gussets. And I am nervous. So I'm thinking I may do a sample to test to see how well I do with um, making a gusset, thumb gusset. I might just practice on a sample before I actually make the thumb gusset on the wrist warmers and see how that goes because I am definitely afraid. So I said all that to say last night I was laying in bed. I was saying to myself um, that I feel that cable knit stitching is a lot easier to me it seems than making the finger gusset. And maybe it's just me seeing all the steps and the place markers and all the stitching and how I have to pay attention that scares me and it may not be as bad as I'm thinking it is. So that's all I wanted to say about that subject. Now my second subject I wanted to discuss, now mind you, I told you uh, this week has been officially two months that I've been knitting. So August 8th, September 8th, November 8th. Two months that I've been officially knitting. So people who are non-knitters, and you gotta love non-knitters because you gotta love anybody that doesn't know exactly the craft you do, what it involves. You have to love them because they ask you for things that they don't understand the difficulty or the gravity of it, depending on what stage you are in the craft. I first started knitting and all of you know, scarves are the easiest things in the world to knit. And so um, I was pushing out scarves like popping popcorn. It was like pop, 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 one after the other. Scarf, 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 scarf. So knitting in the round to me came easy. So of course I was knocking hats out left and right. Hat, 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 hat. I was just killing it, right? So you start getting requests. And you guys know I've been getting requests for people to say, oh, make me a hat, make me a scarf, make me a hat, make me a scarf. And that's fine. I make it and I send them off because they're not asking for a specific thing. So I had one person um, who follows me on Instagram. She uh, makes Hamie uh, jewelry with crystals. And I bought tons of her stuff. She recently had a baby. And she took a picture of the hat. And she sent it to me and said, can you make me one of these? And so I looked at the hat. It didn't look like a difficult hat. However, I need a pattern. And I don't think people realize that when you knit, you need a pattern to knit just like sewing. They just look at something and say, oh, can you make me that? You know how someone sees a dress and you're wearing the dress and it's like, oh, that's beautiful. Where'd you buy it? Oh, I made it. Can you make me one? I need a pattern. I need a pattern in your size and I need to find out all the materials that are needed to make this pattern. So it just, it's, it's funny to me how 
people ask for things and they don't realize what it really involves to make the thing they're asking for. And they don't understand that their levels of being a knitter, especially when you're making the easiest thing there is to knit, i.e. a scarf, they think, oh, she's really good at this. She can knock it out. Make me a pair of socks. Well, we all know socks take time. Socks are difficult to make. They're in the category to me of um, thumb, thumb gussets. <laughs> because it's a heel to it. You have to make sure the seam doesn't is correct. You have to, um, you have a multitude of things you need to consider when you're making a sock. It's not just, oh, I can knit up a pair of socks in an hour and be done with it. Especially as a new knitter, it takes time and um, it takes patience and it takes a pattern. So, um, a lot of people, and it's no fault of their own, they don't realize that it takes a pattern to make things. So when she said it, she sent it to me, I said to her, I said, I can make this because I'm practicing. I don't mind making stuff for people because it gives me practice. I said, I can make this for you. I just have to find a pattern. And I assumed I was giving her the hint to say, if there's no pattern, I can't make it. But she said, okay. Now, I did attempt to look for a pattern. However, I don't know the name of the hat. I don't know where she got that picture from. I would need more information to give her exactly that hat. And then the other thing with that hat, it was a multicolored striped hat. And of course, I know how to add a color when I'm knitting and, and change colors. As you guys, if you've been watching my videos, know I can do that. However, you have to be more than a beginning knitter in order to knit with different colors that are implemented. And that's why I got the wrist warmer book that didn't involve um, having to uh, add colors because I'm still new. So people will ask for things that they think is just easy and simple without realizing what it takes in order to make what they're looking at. Um, that, I just found that funny. It's nothing wrong with it because they don't know. Ignorance is bliss. Knowledge is frustrating, especially when you're trying to explain it to someone who's ignorant of something. And ignorant doesn't mean stupid. Ignorant means you don't know. Stupid is when you know and you still ask. <laughs> so, um, hey. And another thing, um, someone in my beginning knitters book posted a picture of some socks that were actually crocheted and it was so funny because my sister she asked for the same pair of socks but i don't think she she did i know she didn't know they were crocheted and so i said i have to find a pattern because this is crochet it's not knitting and also with the multicolored items i don't think people realize the multicolored items aren't multiple yarns it's all one yarn that blend it together like this. So when they see something colorful, they may think, oh, this takes only five or six skeins of yarn, but actually it's just one skein with a bunch of different colors that the manufacturers kind of put together for us. And so when the woman on the beginning knitters page said, where can I find the pattern for this? I want to knit this. Some smart blue in the um, section said, <laughs> actually you can't knit that that's crochet <laughs> I thought it was funny but as a new knitter she didn't know just like someone who isn't who's a non-knitter wouldn't know so I just I just find the things that some non-knitters ask for funny um, because they don't understand certain things take certain skill levels certain things take um, knowledge and certain things you haven't tried. Some people, and, and maybe it's just me, maybe it's because I'm not as smart. I'm not a young whippersnapper anymore. I don't have the brain power to learn as fast as others. And that may be the case. Some people can knit and jump right into those difficult stitches with no problem. Some people start off knitting wristless mitts their first time knitting. Kudos to you, young whooper snapper. Kudos to you. It wasn't me at all. 
So some people can do that, I cannot. So I need to be able to take my time. I need to be able to learn the stitching and I need to be able to knit without making a variety of mistakes that are mistakes that can be seen and known um, or at least frog it or tink it back where I can correct the mistake and it still look like a professional piece. I, you can't expect, and that's, and that's the main reason when someone asked me to send them a scarf, my back, oh, I've been having, I need to stretch. I've been stretching in the mornings usually. But um, anyway, you have to have a certain level of know-how in order to do something. And I'm just not there yet. And so I find it funny that when someone gives you an item to stitch or to knit, they think it's easy and you're looking at it. I can't do a cable knit yet. I can't do a thumb gussie yet. This is crochet. I have no clue how to do this. I need a bag in order to do it. So I think when people ask, and if they just simply ask, oh, can you make me a stuff? Can you make me a hat? That's fine. But when you get into specifics of wanting a particular thing, you can't ask, you can ask a new knitter, but just understand it may not be what you want. And new knitters, don't start, and that's another piece of advice. You can take it or leave it. I just want you to see how it's looking. Um, the color's changing, so. But new knitters, I want to let you know, don't start charging people for stuff. If you know you're a new knitter and you don't know what the heck you're doing, you can't tell someone, oh, I'll make you this difficult pattern, and you give it to them with holes you've missed, where you've dropped the stitch, where you've yarned over when you weren't supposed to yarn over and you did anyway but didn't realize it, and you've got these huge gargantuan holes in your piece. You can't be a new knitter. You can be if you want and make crappy product. I, to me, I just think that that's wrong. I'm, I didn't get into this to to charge or anything, it, re it relieves my anxiety. And as long as Hobby Lobby and Michaels and Joann's continue to have yarn on sale, I never charge anybody to make something for them. But if you're one of those new knitters that think, oh, I can do this now, I'm pretty good at it, I'm gonna start charging, make sure that the quality you're given is something that you would wear. Um, like people in the South, and I don't know if they say this all over the world, but all you have is your name. And if you're giving something out that has your name attached to it, you, you should want to make sure it's quality because you won't have repeat customers and people will look at you like you lied to them, telling them you can do something that you actually cannot do. And it's okay to say if someone asks you, can you make me this? It's okay to say, no, I can't. I don't have the skill level to make you that. Even if you're not being paid for it, even if it's a friend or family member, you can say, actually, I would need this and I'm not comfortable with that stitching yet, so I won't be able to make that. They'll understand or they won't. And if they don't, they can pick up two needles and get some thread and make it themselves. So as a new knitter, I just want you guys to be aware. It's okay to be confident. It's okay to see that you've progressed from day one to month or year, wherever you are in the game. It's okay to see that progression, but I just implore you to realize your skill set um, where you are, because it doesn't matter how long you knit it. You can say, oh, I've been knitting for six months, but you maybe only knit three projects within that six months. You can say, oh, I've been knitting two months like me, and I've knitted over 15 products in two months. So just because you've been knitting for a certain amount of time doesn't determine your skill level. Excuse me, I have to count this. Knit one, two, knit one, two, knit one, two, knit one, two, knit one. Okay, so um, that's something also to look at. And I just wanted to come on here to kind of discuss that with you guys because I just, I, I, I don't know, I was laying in bed and I was knitting this and I just thought about some of the things that make me laugh um, because I've been discussing my anxiety so much and I just found those two things made me laugh. And maybe some of the older knitters who are watching have experienced when they were newer knitters, someone saying, oh, can you make me this? And you're looking like, you want me to make you a pair of what? Socks? 
I don't even know how to use double pointed needles. But they don't understand double pointed needles involves three needles plus the one you're knitting with. They don't understand when you're asking for a hat that requires double pointed needles instead of circular needles that you actually have four needles that you're holding with one needle that you're knitting with. And I didn't even realize that. Um, I'm going to show you one more thing. I didn't even realize that with that they gave you five needles for a reason. I was like, why are they giving us five bamboo needles inside one package of double pointed needles? This is why. This hat requires four double pointed needles to knit this project. So a lot of hats you can start in the round, but when you finish and when you get to the top and it gets tight, you're gonna need to pull out your double pointed needles. So this hat, you actually need all four needles to hold it and the fifth needle to stitch. So they don't understand the difficulty of that. And I put that on my um, Instagram page. I did a little mini video. It's also on my discovering um, underscore knitting uh, Instagram page where I showed a picture of the three, um, the double pointed needles when I was knitting the knits. And I said, when you pay someone to make your handmade item, make sure that you pay them what they ask because this is what it takes in order to make this. So um, that's a pet peeve I have as a new knitter. Um, and, and, that, and people don't do it to be mean. They don't do it to be funny. They just, they're excited because they, and this is the, it's a compliment actually because they're excited because they see that you are doing something and to them, it looks good. To them, wow, this looks great, you did a good job. So they want more from you because they understand that you have a talent. And so that you should be proud of. However, know your limitations. That's all I say. Know your limitations because if you promise something that you cannot deliver, it's gonna show. And they probably will never ask you again. And if you want to get rid of somebody, that's a good way to do it. Don't tell them you don't know how to do it. Attempt it. Mess it up. Give it to them anyway. Get their money. And you probably won't see them again. <laughs> but um, those are just some of the things I wanted to come on here and discuss with you guys. Because my last two videos, they really weren't um, discussing long discussions or topics. So I just wanted to give you a full video of me knitting um, of me discussing things that I've been worried about. And yes, I am going to do the thumb gusset. I'm procrastinating, but my niece needs her scarf first. So I'm going to do her scarf first. And then I'll get back to my wrist, um, my wristless um, mitts. Because I've, I've got like two more inches to go before I start the thumb gusset. And I'm going to watch a couple of videos and see how they do their place markers and all that stuff and I know it's not the same as my pattern but I just want to see and try to get comfortable with it and I may do a sample of a thumb gusset just to kind of familiarize myself and, and get comfortable and then attempt it on my wrist warmers so I won't have to frog anything back or um, be disgusted and throw the whole project away so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this sit and knit with me that's cute sit and knit I hope you guys enjoyed this sit and knit with me and until next time, um, happy knitting.